Welcome, crew, to What Are Your Three, a Channel 3 podcast where we take a member of the Channel 3 community, discuss three games of their choosing, go through some honorable mentions, other odds and ends for a nice little video game discussion. I'm Dan Tucker, and with me as always is El Ray. Hello, everybody. Today's guest, he hosts many different things. He hosts stuff on Dad Gaming. He's a Halo guy, FPS, but he also is a big turn based gamer. This is. One of the things I learned about him, and we're going to listen to here as we go through this list, it is Gong Show Dad himself. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. I Thank you so much for having me today. So we're going to do something a little bit different here with you, Tony. Since you are in the mental health field, we took this opportunity here in May. Since 1949 has been Mental Health Awareness Month in the United States and something you're passionate about, you've done a, a a number of things, frankly, with the dad gaming, uh, including at least one huge discussion that I remember uh, really focused on mental health in the gaming field. But we figured this would be as good a time as any to to take this space that we have and talk about mental health, the importance of mental health. I, I think not only the importance of it, but just I, I, there's still that stigma out there for some people, but a little, right, bit, a little yeah. bit of everything here, Tony. I'll, I'll kind of kick it to you. to Right. Yeah. So um, my I'm a licensed counselor, um, a of my job right now is a behavioral health case manager, and I work mainly with parents um, and adolescents. But yeah, I mean, it can be draining, so not a lot of people know that, So, because I don't really talk about it at the end of the day when I'm gaming. But you're right, for the dad gaming, we did interview, he is a doctor, but he specializes in research and video games. And it's amazing just what they're doing now with video games and implementing that into therapy. It's just it's just. Awesome. So um, I'm not sure if it was a coincidence that you had me for May uh, when it's Mental Health Awareness Month, <laughs> but it no, worked it was, out yeah, purposely. It was, it was totally planned. Absolute, absolute <laughs> foresight. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. It worked out perfectly because uh, just a kind of a little plug-in for that, and it's it's just uh, you know something like I you know like I do my day job. I don't really broadcast. I think I have it on my so, on my on my soul or my socials like my bio and stuff. But you know, I'm here for anyone if they need it. Like on my Discord channel or my Discord, yeah, my Discord. I have like a little spot for mental health and a bunch of links and stuff people need. And, and I'm always here if someone needs to talk about something or if they need help with anything. But so you sent over a couple of links that I'm gonna add in the interest of, of kind of helping the gaming community here one of the functions on channel three is there's a, a c3.gg that also exists as a part of channel three it's kind of like a a version of some other link consolidation sites takes all your links put them in, puts them in one place but we also have some functions where it'll actually kick you over directly to some other information i i'm setting two up right after this so by the time the podcast goes live we'll have two that are available there number one will be c3.gg slash guardians mh uh, for the Guardians Mental Health site, and we'll talk about that in a, a moment. And the other one's going to be c3.gg slash NAMI. NAMI, NAMI, I don't know how you pronounce it from an NAMI. acronym perspective. Yeah. NAMI, <laughs> NAMI, the uh, NAMI, NAMI Family Support Group, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So, uh, you know, what, what can I ask? I, I didn't want to ask because I didn't want to waste this conversation in Discord. <laughs> um, but, you know, why did you send these two? What were these? Why were these the two you All picked right. over? Yeah, so on Twitter, I actually follow, I, I use Twitter for like three things, gaming, gaming and gaming news, sports and sports news, and actually like like mental health and behavioral health things. This Guardians MH, if it's guardiansmh.org, it's like a mental health support, nonprofit mental health organization geared towards gamers, gamers, streamers. And I actually, they, you can request like a little mental health kit and they send you it to you in the mail. It's probably a little it, Guardians, so it's kind of more, kind of uh, probably a little more geared towards like Destiny stuff, you know, because you know they're called Guardians of Destiny. But it's a great little thing they sent. And if their link, if you go to their link, they have everything for you how to find a therapist they have an app you can just download on your phones they have a discord bot they have a actual discord channel you can go there too tons of actually clinical psychologists who are part of the program who developed this it's just kind of a great place to speak with someone if you you don't and kind of get in the same mindset as other gamers who are going through this who are going through any other um, you know mental health issues because you know a lot of us use video games as distractions in our lives and it could be good. It could be bad. So it's a great kind of, uh, it's a great way just to get a little extra help there. All right. So sorry for, uh, sorry for taking this down a little bit of a serious path to, to kick off, uh, <laughs> Tony Gong shows, uh, Tony's episode here, but I think, frankly, you said it's important. There is still that stigma piece that's out there that there are people who think that there's something something about mental health and and getting therapy and getting the help you need that you know it feels like it's a sign of weakness. I don't know if that's what it is for some people. Whatever reason it may be, it's important just like any other 
medical profession, medical maintenance, medical intervention. Again, just be aware those those two pages that Tony referenced, uh, c3.gg slash guardians mh and c3.gg slash nami will take you directly to both of those resources by the time you hear this episode. Yeah. And just quickly, the NAMI one, that's just simply, um, I use that a lot for parents who just need like a support group for their kids or people they take care for just, you know, cause it's going to be overwhelming dealing with a child with uh, you know, a mental health disorder. So it's just kind of ways like to find support groups and stuff like that and talk to it and about other people. Amen to that. I can, I can vouch for that one in particular. <laughs> so no, th- thanks for you know taking this opportunity while you had to hear again, it, all kidding aside, this was not something that we planned. And, you know, Tony jumped right in knowing that this is going to be hitting in May. We're recording in May. Uh, it's a great thing for us to talk about, especially in the gaming space. So thank you for bringing that up, Tony. Yeah, thanks for, for thanks for listening. All right. Well, let's get on to the normal order of business then and start talking about your three games. Game yeah. number one, Final Fantasy VII. We asked which Final Fantasy VII, and you said, no, I refuse. <laughs> I, will not, um, I, will, I will not be limited to even one iteration. I will not be limited to one. Uh, so you want the entire sub-franchise for I Final think Fantasy VII. That's what, makes, that's what makes Final Fantasy VII so great, though, is like the entire, I'm like, Final Fantasy VIII, IX, X, they're all great games, too, but like seven, the way they built up the entire universe just made it so involved and in-depth and you get storylines from different people, prequels and sequels, and the movie Advent Children, which is, you know, essentially a sequel, but it's a movie. I, I just think they did an amazing job with the game and just building off of it. Um, I know they kind of rehashed it a bunch of times and they had the remake, and the remake was phenomenal, in my opinion. It just I kind of starts off as the same, but if you play it as its own individual game with like no reference to the first one, I think it's phenomenal. And I think some people didn't like it. Some people liked it, but I loved it. So I have to ask, so we're going we're to start with the OG a little bit here. We're going to go back to the original PlayStation slash PC, which I, I guess is my first question. We're, you know, what'd you play this on originally? So yeah, so the Final Fantasy VII was the first game I ever played for the PlayStation 1. So I remember it was just kind of random. Like my dad and I went to a store. There was a PlayStation there. He bought me, play, he bought me Final Fantasy VII with... I think like a Gran Turismo game or something. It was a racing game. Probably, probably the original game. Gran Turismo, yeah. <laughs> and he bought that and we, we kind of played that a little bit but i final fantasy 7 was one of the first games like i've sat down and played from beginning to end and stuck with it and beat it and completed i felt proud of myself and that's what made me go play final fantasy 8 right after that so as a little bit of nostalgia to that game too but like i said just everything they've done with it it's kind of just stuck in one of my favorite rpgs of all time so i was gonna ask so, so was it, this was in fact your first final fantasy then so was this a, yeah. a first role-playing game experience for you or had you done the kind of turn-based rpgs before not really the final no i've really i mean one of zelda maybe was kind of like my rpgs before playstation one because one of the 97 i think final fantasy 7 came out so i was i think i could be wrong i think it was 97 when it came out so yeah, I, I think you're right yeah nine years old so i wasn't really do- doing too much in video games i think it was like some mario kart and mario and things like that so final fantasy 7 was like you know as a as a 10 year old kid playing that game <laughs> and you know, no spoilers, but you know, some of the scenes in it. Um, oh no, we're, kinda... we're diving into spoiler territory. And if you're not aware after 26 years, you know what? Skip ahead five <laughs> minutes. I'm not All doing right. like it's, it's in, it's in Wreck-It Ralph. There's a joke in Wreck-It Ralph about it. So uh, I mean, I'm just going to ask how, so how did you handle at that point? The, the Aerith uh, situation here? Yeah. Well, at, at 10 years old, you don't expect the main character to die like that. So you're kind of like jaw dropped and you're kind of thinking to yourself, like, is, is this right? Like she's coming back, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to keep playing and she'll come back eventually and I can use her again because like, you know, using magic and stuff, that was awesome. So she was in my party the whole time. But then I think everyone who replays the game, she's not she's not in the party at all <laughs> in the beginning. Because what, you Phoenix know what Downs don't work now? What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, it's not only that too, you lose the gear. Like if you've got Materia attached to her weaponry, it's yeah. gone. It's gone. So if yeah, you've got the good stuff on her, you're screwed. Um, yeah. Yeah, ex- yeah. But like I said, I they do they do really well with. I think the movie actually plays a pretty good tribute. Advent Children, the sequel, does a really good tribute to uh, to her and Zach in in the movie. If you haven't watched the movie, like I highly suggest watching it. It's, it's so I was going to say, good. so so sell me on this because I I watched Advent Children, but I'm going to tell you right. This is part of the discussion. Relax about the movie corner. It's okay. Give us three minutes you on always, this. It's going to be okay. You always find a way. You always find a <laughs> this, way to talk about this movies. This one's not <laughs> my fault. This one's not my fault. But listen, I'm not going to lie. Like I could Sell me on Advent Children. 
in particular because I don't, it's my I fault because I tried to know. watch it in a hotel on a tablet. It's my fault, first of all. But sell me here. So, I mean, uh, I was a big Final Fantasy VII fan. It's really fun. I don't know if like they tried to kind of like, like it'd be cheaper just to make the movie, like a two-hour movie or not even two hours, like an hour and a half, and use that as like a sequel versus making a whole nother game. Because they obviously could have made a whole made the game cut scene. Of it. Yeah, they just did the cutscenes, basically, yeah. it re- Essentially, yeah, they just kind of took cutscenes and threw them up in a movie, and I thought it was phenomenal. Um, and But you also get, like, going from Final Fantasy VII, like, the kind of, like, I, it was, like, really the first 3D Final Fantasy game coming from six. You know, it's all pixels to seven, which is a little more 3D. And the cutscenes was like, oh my gosh, this is so realistic. This is crazy. And so, like, going that to the movie, which is like, and seeing like all the characters fast paced fighting and, you know, Cloud doing his things, j- jumping from building to building with his sword and Tifa doing some crazy punches and stuff. And just seeing everyone in action, like, in the movie is, is amazing. And the story flows really well, too. All right. So now I'm going to swing back around here. So, first of all, before we chronologically get to the remake, I would be remiss if I did not bring up Kingdom Hearts for Ray. So, <laughs> so what's, what's your take on Kingdom Hearts? I got, I got, I got to bring it up for Ray if for no other reason. It wasn't really on your like sub list of things you mentioned. However, we get the continuation here. Get- yeah. So Kingdom Hearts one, I, I play. I I love Kingdom Hearts. I think it's phenomenal. It could have been in my top three, but I just think Final Fantasy seven like plays a little more that nostalgia for me but honestly like that game was such like when i first picked up that game seeing like the disney characters and square square like square enix and stuff i'm like this mm, look, I'm like, okay let's let's try it because you know square enix makes it and stuff so i was just thinking you know let's give it a try they make final fantasy and then i beat the first one i'm like wow this is the greatest thing ever the second one came out and i remember calm faking being sick when the second one came out so i can play it <laughs> the day it came out and i think i beat i beat that game in two days and like no joke i play that thing for i don't I grinded that game to maybe no more, no more than three days, but I beat that game quickly. And I remember when Kingdom Hearts 2 ended and I got, I, I unlocked the secret ending and all that stuff. And then waiting, what, like 15 years for Kingdom Hearts 3? That was so terrible, but it was, it was worth it. <laughs> all right. Well, one, one more detour going down the Final Fantasy uh, sub franchise lane. So the remake, what, what's your take on the remake, your thoughts on the uh, the gameplay change, first of all, and what I will call the narrative adjustments, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, would you call it meta? Yeah, I don't even so, know how you would describe it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it narrative adjustments. We're talking about the Final Fantasy VII remake, right? Oh, yeah, the, re- the Final Fantasy VII remake, yes. Yeah, so it kind of starts out similar. Um, there's some things kind of thrown in there that you're like, wait, that's not right. And eventually, at the end of the game, just completely different shift to everything. And it's almost like... It's in your like it's in your final, face about the I don't shit. No, it's just yeah, um it's just it just takes you down a whole different road. And then so there's a lot of theories that the infamous uh Aerith scene might not happen because of what the events that happened in Final Fantasy seven uh in the remake. Yeah, and but there's like a obviously there's like a these course are, correction this thing is made too. Yeah. So this is uh, there's a ton of theories out there, um, just in regards to like you know, Sephiroth kind of knowing about the events that happened in the first game. So now he's trying to change that, the outcome. So he's going to try to change like the past a little bit, or uh, it's just a very weird. And I'm looking forward to yeah, it, how, how it all ends. You're making it sound a lot more subtle than I interpreted this. <laughs> I interpreted it. <laughs> like there, there are, there's divine intervention taking place at points in this game, trying to course correct it. It's, it's like, yeah, it's, 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 um, I mean, like, I'm not sure if you've played it, but like, it's such like, like fate, like, you know, everything is supposed to happen for a reason and no matter, it's all supposed to happen, like in a timeline. Yeah, you got it's like the, like, you you got like the some, will, the wish, like MCU. Around. Yeah. I got like Marvel kind of MCU, different multi universes stuff kind of working in here now. But if you play like the ending of the remake, you can kind of see, you can kind of see like how it, it, it will be different and it could be why they remade the uh, the Crisis Core, the, the prequel, um, just to kind of get people more familiar with Zach, who was you know the main the main uh, character from the prequels. It's funny because like, people, um, I think a lot of people know Tony as the guy who runs the Halo Group on Dad Gaming. You know, he's he streams Rocket League there. But for whatever reason, I like my first memory of Tony is knowing that he plays Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> like and as, as someone who like I Final Fantasy series is not a series I played like that's the one thing I know like this list has to have Final Fantasy seven because Tony's on Tony's on the show today I love it yep like that that's the game I associate with you <laughs> for whatever reason that's the first memory 
But with that, we're going to talk about game number two, Halo 3. Yes. Halo 3, this is the one we're picking. Oof. You know, I think it's the general consensus. <clears throat> it is on the site that it's the best Halo game. What's So, like, what's your reason for it? Why, why for you? Because some people picked two. Uh, I, you know, if you're a little bit younger, I think some people pick Reach just because that's the game yeah. they played first. So what's your reason for three? I think Halo 3 was just by far the most competitive. I think when Halo 2 came around, people were still getting into it. Um, Halo 2 was awesome. It's just I don't think like that competitive like esports kind of thing really took off until Halo 3 came out. Because it was 2007 when Halo 3 came out, so I was age 17. No, no, 19. Yeah. Yeah, 19. <laughs> I was 19 when they came out. So, like, that's like my, you know, like I said, like Call of Duty was coming out, or Call of Duty Mountain Warfare, the first one was coming out. And then, you know, was, that was like the height of my gaming. And like when I was really, like, I had my Xbox 360, I had a PS2. The PS2 had, I'm not sure if you remember, had the little attachment you put on the back to connect the Ethernet cable. So you can play games like, and you can play online games. And like Killzone was like the first game I ever played online. And I was like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever playing online on my console. So that was like the height. And like, I think that was like the sweatiest I ever got in video games was Halo 3 or that time frame, like 2005 to 2012 ish, mm -hmm. right, right before my first kid. And <laughs> But Halo 3 just had that that little extra bit of it. I just liked how Halo's balancing system works going to games versus Call of Duty, but I still love Call of Duty games. So you, you mentioned it. Uh, Halo 3 made the jump to the Xbox 360. Before that, it was Xbox. Uh, do you remember kind of like that shift? Did you think like, whoa, the graphics have changed yes. dramatically or has the yes. gameplay changed? Yeah, and it's funny because when you go back to the Halo Master Chief collection, you play Halo 3, like, wow, this is so slow. But compared to like the 1 and 2, going to 3, it was just so fast-paced. And just everything about the game like just felt like so much quicker. And then I remember Halo 4 came out and stuff with the... And Halo Five with all the boosting and stuff, and it, you know, I think the Halo Four and Five lost it a little bit, but Halo Three was just, I don't know, it was just, it was just one of those games where you just sweat it out against the other team. And don't forget about the lobbies. the The lobbies never dispersed after afterwards, so you're with the same group of people in a public party chat, and you know, you could beat them by a bunch, and then you'd talk crap to them or they'd whoop up in you and you then they'd talk crap to you and then you'd have to stay in the lobby because you have to beat them so it just yeah it was it was fun so like you said you're big with the you know competitive and the multiplayer what are the like the unique rule sets in halo 3 that you loved and that maybe you wish they would put it in halo infinite because i know that's something you really into yeah um i honestly i love halo infinite's gameplay in general and like the ranked system i think everything is like super balanced i think it's a, one of the most balanced games first person shooter games out there because everyone starts the same weapons the the battle rifles the grenades don't and then you have to fight each other for the for the upgraded guns for the better guns the power weapons for the equipment so it's a it's very strategic versus like a game like call of duty where someone could start off with a sniper rifle and someone could start off with a submachine gun and then you get mad because if someone snipes you and stuff or they have a better sniper rifle because they've been playing more they unlocked all the attachments but uh in halo it's always been just super balanced and everyone has starts out the same stuff and you essentially battle for better items do you think is that the reason why halo is more i guess team-based right you so less, less often you get one guy kind of just running the lobby, right? You have to work yeah. together as opposed to Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, and and that's going back from the beginning. Like, of course, you have those professional players who can just go off and wipe out an entire team. But if you ever look at like their KD and stuff, like their KD is, I mean, if you're a first-person shooter guy, like one point two in Halo, like during the tournaments, which isn't like that great. Like my KD in Halo is a one point two, but obviously I'm not as good. But it's it's way more team based. Like I I compare it to like a first-person shooter version of Rocket League, just because it takes so much teamwork in that game. Tell me about the controller because you know paddles paddles weren't really weren't a thing on the Xbox 360, oh, right? Like, yeah. Tell, tell, tell me about how you held because I, I I mean oh, I no. love the 360 <laughs> controller. If I felt like I could throw that thing against the wall, uh, it would still work. I always yeah. compared it to the PS2 controller. But tell me about. I've got students who still tell me they use claw grip on their like PlayStation. Yes, I never, now. I never did that. A friend of mine used it, and I saw him do it before with how he kind of like just grabs like the joystick with his fingers, and it was just the most awkward thing ever. I never could do it. I know other people who have, and they were just ridiculous with it. I think there's some people in our Halo Infinite group who actually do it too. I think there was someone who still did the claw grip. I'm not sure who though. Maybe the slider or someone, but I, I, I always kind of play normal and. 
I've been playing with paddles for the last or since the first Elite controller came out. Was that four years ago? So uh, it's kind of weird going back to those games and trying to play without paddles. It, it's but made I, all the yeah. difference in the world, right? The paddles. Yeah, it, don't yeah, don't forget it, though. You couldn't really sprint or stuff in Halo Three too. Sure. So it was a little more friendly, you know, with the controller versus like today's games where clearly like mouse and keyboard are obviously going to be a little better with the strafing and the crouching and the jumping and all those like the double the what is it, the uh, the double jumps the I can't the bunny hops. There you go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I still remember. How about the like for fun modes like Griff Ball and stuff like that? Griff Ball is just I mean, if you go in the Master Chief Collection, like they have Griff Ball rotating in and out like almost every other week. That's one of the I think it was the most popular mode out there, and that's the one thing I wish like Halo Infinite brought was all those fun modes like Griff Ball, multi teams like a two v two v two v two, four teams of two. You know, do more things with snipers. Um, they had that repulse soccer mode, and like they kind of just like they they use three pull soccer to um to kind of show everyone like what forge can do but then after that they kind of just like i don't know just kind of got buried and lost so i just feel like halo infinite isn't as good as like those, those other modes you know the, the fun modes you know like fiesta yeah it's fun once in a while but mm-hmm. you don't want to play that for like two hours straight i can play griffball for two hours straight because it's a new mode but, you know drop a new mode and we could play it a bunch and then rotate them out every week are you still playing? I'll finish with this. Are you still playing Halo Three? Do you turn on the Master Chief Collection every once in a while just to get it going? Uh, some I'll, I'll, I do custom games sometimes in Halo Three, like the Master Chief Collection. I don't really just do like it's like rank play or whatever, just normal <laughs> play. But the custom games, the custom games in the Master Chief Collection is doing far better than like the custom Forge and <laughs> stuff and the custom browsers in Halo Infinite. If you go in those two, you have like six or seven Halo Infinite custom browser games. If you go to Halo 3 or their Master Chief Collection, they have like 30 or 40 like custom games going at a time. So the Master Chief Collection is, uh, like in terms of Forge and custom games, are just doing way better than Infinite. You know, I, I'm going to ask this. I feel like I've just skipped it over. It, it almost feels like an afterthought sometimes with these games. Uh, there are story modes in these games. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. right, right. This is the story. I, There's some guy called Master Chief, right? He goes around and does stuff. Uh, hey, you just watch the TV show. Did <laughs> Did it, did it matter? No sarcasm. Does, it, does the uh, does the does the story matter to you? Were you somebody? Because um, I yeah. was a, I was a story I, mode person. I did. That is what got me. That's kind of what got me and sold me really on Halo Three and stuff. It was like the story mode and playing that. And I think I played the story mode for four, and then after that, I haven't touched it. Like I haven't touched a Halo Infinite story mode at all. I might have played it for like twenty minutes with my kid because I saw him jumping into it. But that is it. I haven't touched the story mode in, in a long time with that game. It, like games like Halo and Call of Duty now are just mainly just multiplayer, first person shooter, kind of going back to my teenage years and just kind of reliving that, you know, competitiveness. All right. So let's bounce to a game that I, I, I can't say this game is a story mode, but I guess it's a little, there's a little more to it there. Game three po- Pokemon Red and Blue. Again, Ooh, we're putting, yeah. putting games together here. Pokemon Red and Blue. Uh, let's yeah, start with I, this, right? Let's start with TV show comes out uh, two years before the game does in the US. So the show was 96, I think the game was 98, some of that, I looked it up a minute ago. Do you remember, were you watching the show and then yeah, the games yeah. came out and you're like, wow, well, I, I need to catch the Pokemon too? Yeah, it, it, yep, um, I love the show. I, and I remember waking up every single morning before school and watching it, watching Pokemon right before my bus came to get me. Because I know, the, I can't remember what time it was, but I knew Pokemon came on. And then, you know, it was a half hour time slot. And then like 15 minutes later, my, the bus would come every single morning. I'm downstairs just watching Pokemon. And I remember one episode specifically, like in one of the first seasons, um, when uh, they're on the cruise ship and the Gyarados come and like, and they tip over the cruise ship and they're sinking and stuff. And they're trapped under in the ship with Team Rocket underwater. And that was like a cliffhanger. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't go to school. I got to see what happens next. This is crazy. This, so just things like that. And then I, I just, I, I had I had it. I don't know where it's at now. I have my Game Boy still, like the original Game Boy. I just don't know where like, my Pokemon Red and Blue is. Did you have both? I did, yeah. I had both, and I had Yellow. I remember Yellow came out, and that was amazing, I guess. Did, <laughs> did you have a way to trade between your two games so you can get all the Pokemon? No, I didn't. I that I mean, eventually I did, but at first, no, it was... I kind of just kind of hop back and forth between the games. Uh, when you play... Okay, oh, I guess I have to ask this. What was the starter Pokemon? Um, it was Charmander all the time, or not all the time. Charmander was my go-to. I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I played the game so many times as a kid, so I'd always, I, 
you know, would play around with different Pokemon and stuff. But Charmander just, I mean, he just dominates the first few gyms. Like, I know you get to the water gym right afterwards, but by that time, you already caught like a few leaf Pokemon, like Oddish and stuff. And then you use them to destroy the water gym and then to fire Pokemon from like there on out again. So when you're playing, did you, was what was it more about you? Was it collecting the Pokemon or was it like leveling up Charizard and just um, trying to run through the game with the one or two really big Pokemon? Yeah, I remember when I first started it, when I first started playing it, I remember it was just kind of like just leveling up that Charizard and just making them like maxing them out. Um, cause I, I know back then, like I didn't really, I never used Magikarp or anything cause Magikarp was useless and like you had to, you had to put them in cause there was no, <laughs> there was no XP, um, like not all the Pokemon games you, today, you get XP for the whole group. And now, and when that one came out, it was just for the Pokemon you use. So you had to start Magikarp and then you had to like retreat them right away and get the, get your best one out there and split the XP between the two. And I didn't really understand that. So I think I, what, like my starter Pokemon were always like just level 70 and everyone else mm-hmm. was like 40. <laughs> they so had the experience all, at least in yellow. Yeah, but it made it, it, made it made worse because your main got less than it would have and everyone else kind of split this tiny amount between yes. the rest of them. Yeah, it, it came later, but I just remember remember that like, I never really used those other Pokemon. And I was like my starter and like the Pidgey, like the, the Pidgeys you get in the first in the beginning of the game, uh, like the Pidgeot and stuff like that. Those guys would, you know, be carried with me to, to the Elite Four. But it was after like a few play more playthroughs. I'm like, okay, you know, you're learning the game more, you're learning all the Pokemon more, like who evolves and stuff like that. And then and I think that's why like I had this game in my top three because I played it so many times. And just remember playing my Game Boy, like driving up to New York to see my aunts and uncles and, you know, a 12 hour car ride and just just smashing through Pokemon Red the whole way there. And, you know, it sucks because at nighttime you can't barely see the screen. <laughs> so um, that that was one of the uh, so that's kind of a reason why. Yeah, I definitely threw it on my bottom on my on my top three. And then, like, I, my daughter's playing. She loves Pokemon. She has like 40 Pokemon stuffed animals now and. We just got her a Snorlax, like a big giant Snorlax uh, beanbag chair thing. She plays. She actually beat Pokemon Sword and Shield by herself uh, when those games first came out. As the first, I think the first game she ever beat was Pokemon uh, Sword. So she likes them too. So it's it's cool that I kind of showed her that, and that's like a huge a huge passion of hers now. So important question: Did did you use the Master Ball, or did you keep it just to say that you still have a Master Ball in your collection? Oh no! I use it from YouTube. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I use it from. I remember one time when I didn't know. I think I used like the Master Ball like the first time I got it, like on some stupid Pokemon. I don't know what it was. Uh, I mean, it, I don't remember. Then I got the Mewtwo, and I could never catch him. And I'm pretty sure I restarted the game just so I can get to use that Master Ball to get Mewtwo before. And it's just yeah, I replayed that game so many times how do you feel about this because i actually don't know the total history of it that the lore of red as a character became this like humongous thing i remember playing the game as a kid and just thought oh what a silly what a silly name to call someone red i'm gonna put my own name <laughs> i, I, I want to be ash right that's that's the person in the show how, how do you feel this kind of it became this huge thing red red is this mythical character and you play against they made it a character to play against in future games I mean, he's just Gary, right? No, uh, no, no, no. Red is his own person. You play him at the end of which one? I think Pokemon Gold is like a like a hidden boss at the end. Oh, I never got that much into Pokemon Gold. I know I played like I played some of the Pokemon games after that, but like they were never like Red and Blue, where I just kind of like grinded them out for a bunch of times. And then like Pearl, Diamond, was it uh, Sapphire, Ruby? I think I, I glanced on those a little bit. What, what what was the one with like Cyndaquil? Uh, those might have been like the last, those was, that was the second generation. That's right? second generation. That would be gold and silver. Then the was Chimchar after that. I don't remember the fire Pokemon. It, it may have been. I you know, tell you I played Pokemon Yellow and I think that was kind of the end of my Pokemon journey. Yeah, oh, there was the, the 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 chicken, the fire chicken. My Pikachu. I think that that might have been the Blaziken. That might have been like the last gen I played before I took a break from Pokemon, and then I probably got back into Pokemon. With my daughter, like, hey, let's let's watch some Pokemon, and then that that was back when like Greninja came out and stuff like that. And yeah, ever since then we've been playing Pokemon. I actually kind of replayed Red, I th- probably like a couple of years ago with her just to show her it and stuff. So let me let me end it on this, and then I'm gonna move on to the next game. Which kind of, I, I like how the list came together. So your whole list here, as we go through, you have two 
I feel like they're very opposing styles of video games because you're either playing these really, you know, fast paced games. Some might think Halo is a little slower, but, you know, but Call of Duty is going to come up and that game is running all over the place. Yeah. And then you and then you have, you know, Pokemon and Final Fantasy, these turn based games, you know, strategy, thinking it out. You know, wh- why do you think that is? You have kind of like these opposing styles and somehow like that's what you want to play. I with, I don't know with Final Fantasy it could be a little bit I mean well let's let's think about it. like back then when Final Fantasy came out there was no online gameplay or especially for consoles so sure. every game you played was a single player game whether it's a first person shooter or Final Fantasy or turn based or a racing game whatever it was you're playing by yourself um, unless your friends came over and you know put a controller in port too but um, so I mean I got, as a you know like I said like a nine ten eleven year old kid playing RPGs were just like my I just loved them. And like that's after Final Fantasy VII is when I play. Like I said, I played Final Fantasy VIII, loved it. I played Chrono Trigger after that, loved it. That one's also a great game. And so I think like like those looking for games with like that deep story and making you feel like some kind of emotion, whether uh, it's happiness or sadness. I think just that's kind of like what I look for like in an RPG game. And I think Final Fantasy games have kind of like hit all those little emotions. Like it's just a roller coaster of emotions when you go through those games, and it's it's fun. Playable Characters Podcast, funny interviews with real video game characters. Hi, I'm Calvin Cato. And I'm Brian McGinnis, and we interview video game characters on our show. We have comedians and actors come on and pretend they're a video game character for 30 minutes. We talk to them. It's all ad-libbed and improvised and always very funny. Uh, Past guests include Bowser, Ms. Pac-Man, Q-Bert, Princess Peach, and Princess Daisy. You put them in a booth. And uh, something short-circuited, and I decided that someone was taking too long in the money booth. (laughs) And I hit her with a baseball bat. (laughs) And thus was born Super Smash TV. Just like that. I was being raised by a family of t- of toadstools. Oh. Um, How was that? Is that? That seemed like it might be kind of fun. It bit. was. It was. Really, really back. It was really fun. Mario should stick to plumbing. Okay. Okay. He's a very, from what I hear, a good plumber, a terrible hero. Yeah. So I mean, really bad. And I mean, let's not get started on his whatever he is. Uh, you know. Friend, brother, special friend, I don't know, Luigi, <laughs> whatever brothers, they're doing. Right? They're yeah. sure well, they're that's what they're saying. <laughs> that's what they're saying. They're right. saying they're brothers because, you know, in the uh, Italian-American community, <laughs> these people tend to not look yeah. kindly on certain relations. If you want to know what's going on in your favorite video game character's life, check us out. Playable Characters Podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Yes, it comes out every Monday. All right, that. so we finished up the top three games. We're going to move on to the honorable mentions now. And the first game on this list is the Call of Duty series, the, the Modern Warfare series, one to three in the two yeah. thousands, the mid two thousands. And you kind of you you talked about this with Halo, but I had it as a Call of Duty question because that's where kind of my memory of it is more. Uh, it's funny because we're here, we have you on, we talk about Mental Health Month, so we have to ask: Were you an active participant in the uh, the Wild West, known as uh, the three hundred and sixty chat lobbies? Yeah, um, not. Not terrible. It, it was, yeah. It was all over bit. the place. It was terrible. Yeah, I, I, I said some stuff. It was, I really, honestly, it was never bad stuff. It was more like, you know, you know, you're trash, and you know, look at the score. You know, look where I'm at in the leaderboard, stuff like that. But yeah, it definitely got bad. But like I said, that like, lobbies now these days they disperse after like after each game, and you know, that's. I, more probably for you know skill based matchmaking, but back then those lobbies stayed together until you physically went to that tab and hit leave lobby. But those 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 lobbies were something else. And- oh, there was no filter to it. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know if people if people knew that you know I was going to get to this thing that everyone's going to put a headset on. You know, I, I remember getting my <laughs> my little cheap headset that came with the 360 controller. That eventually breaks. I bought my Turtle Beach headset like every other person did. And, you know, you just, you're just talking away, right? It was kind of like the first time that you're connected at all times to other people. Yeah, because when I, I, I did have a PC and I did play some PC games um, like StarCraft and things like that. But I never had a headset with my PC. So I never really talked to anyone. I'm pretty sure the Xbox 360 came with one. So everyone had one. And and even then you can buy them off of ebay for like 10 bucks and i used to buy them off of ebay all the time because like when they'd break you just buy like two of them for ten dollars and then they last you for a month you buy them some more for like five or ten bucks so everyone had a headset it was just it was just it was just fun it was just a 
like I said, like I'm, I'm a pretty competitive person. I played sports growing up my entire life. I still play hockey to this day, you know, once or twice a week. Uh, obviously, the trash talk has, you know, really came down a lot. But, you know, being a competitive person, that's probably why I like the first person shooter games, too, is just because it's very competitive and um, I, I enjoy it. Some other people might not, but I, I certainly did. Yeah, so if this was high school for me, especially two and three was, you know, I was in school all day with friends, go home, and all of a sudden I'm with my friends still. So let's go. Why Why do you think these, I mean, these three games, you know, one sets it up. I mean, I, I was really, I loved three. I know a lot of people loved like two. Why did these games take over the world the way they did? What was, uh, what's so was great just... about Call of Duty that, that did this? Because if I believe Medal of Honor came out around the same time as Call of Duty, like when the Call of Duty, like the first one back in World War II, I think it was, like when the first one came out or the first one setting, I think those two kind of like competed against each other and Call of Duty broke away with like Modern Warfare. It was just, a, I mean, back then the Xbox 360, like the, if you even if you go back and play, I think the lobbies are still open. If you can find Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 um, on a 360, like backwards compatibility, you can still find some lobbies. But like, if you even like the, the graphics back then, like playing it, what fifteen years later or so, it's really they're, they're not they're not that bad. They're actually pretty decent still. Like they hold up after all these years. And I think back then, like when it came out, it was like, oh my gosh, it's so realistic, but it's so fast paced and so fun. And I think all that, all those things, just kind of stuck. And yeah, and back then, the Infinity Ward was at the top of their game. And so, so you talk about the Modern Warfare games. What about the ones in between the uh, Black, Black Ops? Ops? Yeah. <laughs> Is that I, was that just? I is it a like different them. feel to you? So you want? Yeah, they instead? had a different. They had a. It was a different studio. A different, I feel like their actually story mode from Black Ops was actually better than the Modern Warfare ones. Like I, I, I remember, I remember playing those those story modes, Modern Warfare and Black Ops, and I remember Black Ops being a little more of like a, a cliffhanger, and you're on the edge of the sea a little bit more. And also, their zombie mode was just fantastic and a fun, just a. Just a great time to play the zombie modes and getting the ray gun. And that actually had like some really sophisticated lore in the back of those zombie games too. So playing those was really fun. I think Modern Warfare, their game, I think Black Ops felt a little more cartoonish. Like it obviously looked real, but it just had that little, I don't know, something to it just made it seem a little less realistic. And I feel like Call of Duty, like Modern Warfare has always been a little quicker. I'm with you. I played Modern Warfare was multiplayer for me. And then Black Ops were definitely more just story in a zombie mode. It felt like... It felt more game-ish than the Modern yeah, Warfare. Yeah, I, I played it, but I just preferred Modern Warfare. Mm-hmm. So you, I think you hit this already, but you've played the new Modern Warfare games, and I know you play them. Yeah. Are the and you know people? Some people complain about the new games. Some people say, "Oh no, we we found it again." Are the old games? Do they really hold up? Are we just all stuck in nostalgia? Are the new games not as no, good as? No, because old I think last year some. At some time, my buddy and I jumped on like the model work, like the bad one that came out in 2007. Um, we jumped on to the backwards comp- compatibility from the Xbox, played it like on Xbox 360 lobbies, and was playing. Like, and we were having a blast. It was so much fun. And we're like, "Damn, why can't this? Why can't this game be like just remade? Just everything like updated graphics, just to now." It was. It, we had a blast playing it. So okay, so let's finish with this. What What do you think is the biggest difference between? Modern Warfare and now and the remakes or the remasters of now. What what's kind of holding these new ones back that the old ones did correctly? Um, I think they're doing too much with it. Um, if you just remember back then, you had like your three perks and like a few attachments to the mm-hmm. guns. It was just very very simple, um, and it was much more based on like your gameplay, like the skill involved versus. I, I feel like now there's too many extra variables. Well, like. What is it like the new one has like 10 different attachments you can put on the gun and now like the unlocking different attachments like you'll unlock a gun get that attachment for that gun but then you can use that attachment for other guns it's just very weird how they do it like obviously it's they're trying to make it realistic but i mean this we have to remember it's still a video game let's <laughs> it's it's you know, i don't want to do all that um but i think those old the old modern warfare games are just very straightforward you level up unlock a gun Use that gun, unlock a few attachments, and you're good to go. And then don't there wasn't really a lot of downloaded content too. So like the DLCs were almost non-existent for a while. I think the only DLCs they had was maybe a gun and some few maps. And now it's just the season passes. So prestiging in those Call of Duties meant more than now. All right. Let's jump back from uh, as Ray mentioned earlier, fast paced to turn based. Back and forth. <laughs> let's snap let's snap the rubber band back and head to the previously mentioned. 
Final Fantasy VIII. Obviously, you know, you mentioned it came to this after Final Fantasy VII. What was your, how did you react to it following Final Fantasy VII? Your first Final Fantasy game, they're not really linear. They're mostly existing in their own realms, except yeah. for like X2 so, predating 7, something like that. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. But <laughs> let's save, save those I, for the link discussion. Sorry, go on. Honestly, when I was playing, like as a kid, I thought Final Fantasy VIII, like at that time, was better than Final Fantasy VII in terms of like story mode and things like that. And don't forget, like their amazing triple triad. You guys remember the triple triad card game that you'd play? I Oh, um, I, I, you, I had that on the list because... You're having the exact opposite takes of me. Go on. I need to hear this. I think if they made a mobile game for Triple Triad, and I think it would be amazing. And I I replayed Final Fantasy VIII probably a couple of years ago, and I spent way too much time doing the Triple Triad and looking on, on Google and trying to figure out where to get all these cards from. I spent way too much time doing it, and it was so fun. But at that time, like when I played Final Fantasy VIII, I thought it was better than Final Fantasy VII. And I think if... They took Final Fantasy VIII and did all the prequels and sequels and all that stuff. Like they give like the if they give it the Final Fantasy VII treatment. I think eight would be probably would have taken the list. I I need to. I have it re-downloaded on the Switch. I'm gonna give it another shot. <laughs> so sell me and, on it. Tell me tell me that I'm right. Tell me why I have to I have to take another run at it. Well, it's also probably like one of the more grounded Final Fantasy games out there. Like it. I mean the like the setting of the game is pretty like close to. I mean, obviously, you know, swords and summons and magic and stuff. Yeah. But like in terms of like driving cars, you know, just kids in school and stuff, armies, uh, it's just like the cities, you know, yeah. Final the Fantasy VII had a very down to earth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you first start off, like the towns and stuff, like compared to like other games, like Final Fantasy VI was very, you know, old school. Uh, Seven was very almost like grungy in the beginning. And then like, it's like the first town you leave from Final Fantasy VII, you're going out into like a, like an old town and then you're going to like some old Cosmo Canyon, I think it is like uh, with the red and all of them. So but Final Fantasy VIII kind of kept that like the most similar to like, like our current setting. And I think it's just like the great story of all the other Final Fantasy, Final Fantasies. And you know, like a kind of like a, almost like a current timeline of ours. Yeah. What I, yeah, I'm trying to think of, uh, I don't know what what do they describe it as like a, a neo medieval hybrid of some sort because they, I mean they're really rolling with that especially through fifteen and well what a segue you know what I'm just going to jump into the future games because we're gonna <laughs> let's let's lead it off uh, exactly where we are going there then as uh, you've got a couple of future games we already talked about Final Fantasy seven and the next piece there of Rebirth but let's talk about Final Fantasy sixteen and just kind of the massive jump this has made from a battle system perspective. Going yeah, it looks from like they're seven taking, onward. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they're taking like the Final Fantasy VII remake kind of battle system and it looks faster. Um cuz uh, if you play the remake from uh, the 7 remake um uh, it's it's almost like a hybrid. So you can kind of, you can button mash, but then like when you select your actual ability or spells, time slows down and everything. So can you you bring back like that turn-based style cuz you know time slows down, you have time to pick your your move, your skill, your ability, your items, whatever you have to do. You can switch characters, slow down time again, you know, kind of take your time like a turn-based game. 16, I don't, I, I haven't really seen too much on 16. I know they did a big reveal a few weeks ago. I wasn't able to watch a full thing, but it does look a little faster. But I know the trailers from my scene just, it just makes the, the, the game look so much darker with all the Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasy just elements in the game, like, you know, summons and magic. So I'm M-rating? really excited to play that. Like, can we just get, it is, can, right? we get the, can we get that out there? Like the M rating is going to be a big change. Yeah, it's one of the first. I guess one of the first streamlined Final Fantasy games to be uh, rated M. Because then there was the uh, which one was the Strangers of Paradise? I think was rated M. I never, I haven't played that one yet. But but yes, I'm I'm excited for this. I'm hoping that from what I've seen, like it looks like you just play it, like as a solo character. So like, I got that like kind of like a Dark Souls Elden Ring kind of vibe from it too. I never played those, so hopefully it's not very difficult. But I guess we'll see because it looks I think it looks phenomenal. So, yeah, I'm 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 very, very curious. And this has that uh, I'll again call it neo medieval look to it more. So, I mean, it's it's a lot more of a polished medieval look to it, I think, than some of the others have been. Is that uh, a yeah, way um, to put it? I think Final Fantasy 12 or I guess 14 was technically like the last that's an MMO but in terms of like you know the single player games I think 12 was like like the really like the last kind of like medieval style game because 
13 was with lightning and that was kind of a little futuristic then 15 was like you know the four guys i only played like six hours of that one i just kind of couldn't really i couldn't stick with that one i didn't think like the story really gripped me like the other ones but yeah 16 looks to come back to its you know those kind of medieval roots that really you know sent the game the sent final fantasy on its path that's not it is now all right and we have one other game you're looking forward to here grand theft auto 6 so we've, yeah, we, um, we've had we've had some things here. What do you think? Go on, please. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have, we haven't talked about it at all. But I was trying to think of those games I'm looking forward to. I'm like, okay, well, honestly, the games I'm looking forward to is Final Fantasy 16. You know, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth comes out later this year, or supposed to come out, you know, in winter. Then I'm like, I I couldn't think of anything else. Um, there's really no first person shooters games coming out. You know, Halo's already out, Call of Duty's out. I don't think they're making a new one. Maybe some DLC later. And then I saw some like news articles for Grand Theft Auto 6, like saying like they're possibly starting production on the game. I think they might have started in February of 2023 and a potential 2025 release date. And it it's all going to be Series X, PS5 and PC. So no Xbox One or PS4, which is how it should be if it's going to be in 2025. I mean, it. Um, sorry for anyone who can't get one, but <laughs> you have a couple more years. But I, I just was remember playing Grand Theft Auto Three when it first came out, playing Four when it first came out, playing Vice City, playing Five even when it first came out on, uh, on a three. I think it was a three sixty, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's a it's a of, three generation game at this point. Yeah, I remember it was, playing it was on at the end of the. And, it came out at the end of the three three sixty generation. Then the then they re released it for the the four and the one. Yeah, so I'm like super hyped to see like what they can do with the Grand Theft Auto game with all these like all with all the current technology they have now. I I just remember um, the jump when they moved for Grand Theft Auto Five, even going from the PlayStation Three to the PlayStation Four, and seeing like the way the flip flops interacted. Like, yeah, it, it went from being like a piece of the foot to like its own little <laughs> like flopping mechanism. Like there's stuff like that, like just the the stupid little details that they put into it. Yeah, I played Grand Theft Auto Five like kind of on and off. Their online stuff is always super fun. The little casino and stuff. It it, it kind of sucks sometimes because you have people always hunt you down and kill you with helicopters and stuff, and it gets a little annoying. But honestly, if you get a group of people going and just messing around in the city, it's a blast. It's uh, I I love it so much and. And so I'm really excited for Grand Theft Auto Six, especially just to kind of change, like you said, like I'm, I'm, I like competitive games, so like you know Halo and Call of Duty and Rocket League. I like RPGs, you know, with the good stories, so Final Fantasy, and you know I, you know I dabbled in God of War. I'm playing Spider Man now, so you know I like a good RPG, but like Grand Theft Auto Six is like just a completely different. <laughs> it's a it's a different genre. I don't a, a, I don't know what kind of genre you'd really put it in. Open world criminal <laughs> empire game. Psychotic uh, Schadenfreude. I don't know. <laughs> so that's yeah. I'm looking forward to kind of change the pace with that. I think the thing you called out that I'm really, I'm just, I'm waiting to see is when we're going to cut the cord on the one and the four. And no, no disrespect. Like I'm lucky enough. I got my hands on a four. I mean, they're accessible now. If you have the resources, good, good for you. But mm. I, I feel like there's still a throttling that's happening. I, I really expected like the show 23 this year to have a a jump and like the EA games to make a jump. And I feel like they're still holding back trying yeah, to, trying to balance kind of, the two sets of systems. I, I don't know. I'm waiting I mean, to see I it. Think, yeah. And, and every time I go to the store, there's a series S at least uh, in stock. I've seen a few oh, you PS can, fives and stuff. You can find the S's anywhere. They're giving them away at this point. They are literally giving them away at like yeah. Verizon and Comcast, I think, but yeah. 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 So, I and like I went to GameStop for like my my son's like a little some birthday presents. I saw a couple PS5s there. They had a few used ones too for like fifty bucks cheaper. But you can get them. I but I think like making these games like back or not backwards compatible for Xbox One and then also the Series X or you know four and five. It kind of inhibits what they can do. So I'm glad that they are pushing and making games like that for you know PS5 or next gen only. And I believe they're doing the same for. Final Fantasy 16, I think. That so that that 16 I, is so far as to only be on the PS5. They're not even doing it on the Xbox because allegedly no, I, I mean, this, I'm not trying to start I mean, a fight here. They're not doing it for PS4 though. Oh yeah, they're not doing it for PS4, but they're saying the reason for it being only yes. on 5 is the processing power. Like they they have they've built it exactly. very specifically for the processors on the 5. And again, I'm not trying to start a fight. Everybody chill. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just kind of very intrigued uh, as to see exactly what they're they're bringing out guns blazing for that. Yeah, uh, but I'm I'm glad they're doing that though because I, obviously if you make it for four and five, there's some things from the five that you'd have to 
you know, you wouldn't be able to use a full, the, you know, like I said, the processing power of the PS5. And, you know, I, I tell anyone it, you know, it's kind of a little sidetrack, but, you know, if you can't afford a PC, the Series X and the PS5 are literally like the best, the best bang for your buck. If you just want to play video games, if you don't really care about streaming or anything, just get a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, like whatever one you prefer. For 500 bucks, they're going to run 120 frames at 1440 or upscaled 4k but uh they're, they're great deals all right one of the things we do during the course of the podcast we take a quest a question from the channel three history books to discuss with our guest and our quest for you what is the most recent game you finished i think like from start to finish i think it was god of war ragnarok all right so tell so tell me Wait, so sir? you got ragnarok in what'd you think um yeah so I played the first one. I, I I never played the one from 2018 um, until Ragnarok came out, and um, you know that stuff's pretty interesting, like the 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 mythology and all of that. I tried 28, the one from 2018. Um, I I thought it was okay, <laughs> but I thought Ragnarok like really picks it up with like Thor and Odin and all them. Oh my god, like this thing's a roller coaster ride. This is so much fun. The gameplay took a little bit, but I. I love Ragnarok. I thought it was really, really fun in, you know, playing God of War 2018 and then on from a PS4 and then jumping into Ragnarok like a month later on the PS5 is <laughs> just completely different. I mean, I think that experience alone made it like more enjoyable. How, how was that jump? Because I felt like the, the 2018 God of War was like an unlock for the PS4. Like when, when you, you, yeah, got, so I played it. Yeah. Ahead, on sorry. my PS5, but it was a PS, it was a PS4, you know, the backwards compatible yep. thing. Yeah, comparable. Um, no so difference, it was just, yeah. it was really just the quality of life things, like in terms of like just the graphics himself, and actually the the um, the combat just felt a little smoother, and you know, just like just simple things like blocking and parrying and things like that just seemed a little easier to do because everything was so fluid, and like the PS5 controller like way better too, so that helps. Narrative, thumbs up, thumbs. I mean, I guess you jump right from. Uh, God of War into Ragnarok, so narratively uh, satisfying. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what the one thing I didn't like about 2018 was like I felt like uh, like you had all that mythology, but no one really showed up except for that. Who was the first guy? The Bald Balder? Is that yeah. Him? Yep. Yeah. I feel like he was like really the only person to show up. I think Thor. <laughs> they saved them. Too, kind they of, saved them all for two. Yeah. And then the Ragnarok, mm-hmm. you have like Odin and Thor and um, oh, Heimdall and yeah, you got you, got, you, you literally ran out. the entire gamut of it because they. They took what was going to be two. It was twice as long as uh, 2018's was, and they basically said they were going to do two separate games and said, "Screw it, we'll just make it one." I'm happy with that though too, because mm-hmm. it was. I actually just rented it from from GameFly. <laughs> I had a free month of GameFly, and I just rented it from there, and I played it. But I had I didn't really do much of the and like the extra stuff on it. I kind of just went for the story, just you know, oh, you know, from beginning to end, just for the story, and that kind of made me go to spider-man because i heard people saying some awesome things about it so i'm just i'm jumping into that now and i'm having fun with that it's kind of like the opposite of grand theft auto where you save people instead of hurt them while roaming a city it's so it it is my favorite game of the of the four gen the spider-man is not not god of war god of war great generation it it is a it is a landmark game technologically narratively they they took what i thought was toast with god of war and and brought it back but well, I, I could do Spider Man. Let's do Spider Man all day, but I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm only like uh, like six or seven hours into it, but I'm having fun with it so far. All right, we've made it to the last question of the podcast, which is always, "What's your favorite feature on Channel Three? Ooh, so um, you guys know that I run like the Halo stuff. We have a dead gaming Halo season three, and you know, I dabbled in Fortnite. Um, we did Thursday events for the dead gaming of Fortnite. Um, I, you know, we did call our call of duty stuff on Fridays and it's like running events, you know, like Garrett, Matt, Harry Rackham. Um, I know he probably loves this, but I think like the event feature and channel three, I know a lot, a lot of people kind of, I think a lot of people might sleep on it because, um, they're not doing all the backend stuff, but I think what Joel has done with the events and making brackets and things like that, it just allows everything to run so smoothly, like the rocket league tournaments on Tuesdays, things like that. Obviously. It's like the social media aspect of it, just talking video games and not having to worry about like the BS other things out in the world, like infiltrating like the social media. That's fun. And but I really love the events and making the brackets and things like that. I think Joel did a phenomenal job with that. 
And concerning, like he only, I, what have we used like that that bracket for the first time like two months ago, I think. So it's only like two months old, and you know he's still working on it and things like that. Just like phenomenal. So far, we're using it for the Halo season, the the event and the bracket, and it's working great so far. All right, and with that, we've made it to the end of another What Are Your Three podcast. Reminder: We were talking about mental health awareness. For the month of May, you can find those links, c3.gg slash n-a-m-i and c3.gg slash guardians m-h. You can find the podcast at c3.gg slash podcast. They drop every Wednesday morning at 3.33 a.m. Eastern on all the major platforms, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. I am L. Ray. Dan Tucker puts this thing all together. Thank you again to Tony, the Gong Show Dad, for being here, and our executive producer, Joel Willis. Have a good day, everybody. I don't think any kids should be coming down. The younger ones are sleeping. Well, good luck, because mine just came down one? ten minutes ago about a tooth. Oh, perfect. So uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna hurt my. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> uh, Ray and I had our uh, Halo matchup last week. I was trying to get on. I told them like literally, I was getting everyone to sleep, and my daughter's like, my tooth is loosed. Hold on. And then she just like literally just grabbed it, twisted it, pulled it out, and just blood everywhere. She's like, oh, I got it. So I'm like, oh, crap. I'm like, hold on, hold on guys. <laughs> My kid just ripped out her tooth. Let me like, give me 10 minutes. Mine lost two in the same day. She she did like a week and a half ago, and then a third one, and now a fourth one is on its way out. She's tearing through these teeth right now. It's, <laughs> it's rough being eight. And How old is she? Eight, eight, eight-year-old girl. And she's, oh, she's, she's eight? Yeah, those molars are, are working their way. She's working her way through molars, so um, she's got a she's got a fang on the way out. I now. think that's what, yeah, yeah. Mine's gonna be ten, and her I don't know. It was like one of the molar ones back down there somewhere. Yeah, we we're we're really excited about what this really early tooth loss can mean for the rest of our lives with her. Can't can't wait for the teenage <laughs> years to hit early. I mean, they started at two for her and haven't stopped, but still, teenagers. Um, three going on thirteen. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, oh, question for you. So it, it's up to you. I don't know if you want to go with Tony, Gong Show, Interchangeable, Avoid One, or Do the Other. Um, it doesn't matter. Avoid Tony I mean, or not, that's the question. No, you can call me Tony. That's my yeah. name. So. So, some, people, <laughs> some people prefer to separate things. So I just want to make sure we know we're... No, you know, no, I don't... Yeah, I don't we're, care. We're good. As, as I've addressed before, I've never referred to the other guy here as Hector ever and uh, right, yeah <laughs> i refuse to do so i will only refer to it to the fact that i have not done so someone in person someone asked me like what's his like what's his name i, I think it's hector uh, <laughs> but i don't not, i'm not sure if he's called ray and that just kind of sticks i don't know what hell hector is <laughs> <laughs> i don't like so i don't like hector i don't like justin i can't stand all these people yeah who's who's that justin that was doing rocket league that rookie yeah freaking i can't stand justin <laughs> Guys, the worst. So Tony, yeah, I hate he, dance as well. That yeah, guy's the worst. That Dan ten eighteen is the worst. That <laughs> guy is the worst. Oh, and the tooth is gone. No. Oh no, this is just a bloody mess. <laughs> I turned on the air today because like eighty degrees outside, and now the basement's freezing cold. But upstairs is still like warm. It's way too cold to wear a t-shirt. I'm waiting on my new stuff to come in. I ordered. <clears throat> I can't wear a hoodie though. It's it's, it's going to be 90 degrees here tomorrow. Oh, this is like my basement hoodie. I just have it on my chair at all times. So when I come downstairs, it gets cold and I just throw it on. I was in t-shirt and shorts all day until I come down to the basement. It's just freezing. Oh, wait, oh my God. Yeah, just uh, slightly more blood than there was last time. So, yeah. <laughs> She's All she's right. working that thing. I warned you it was coming. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> uh, sorry, um, I went the same thing last week. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I got. I, I went with both hoodies. I, I I ordered both hoodies, and then I I told Joel send me a t shirt and a hat. Get get me the updated. Uh, give me one of those Nike hats. Yeah, I told Joel. I was like, I'll buy the hoodie next season because there's no it's point too late for you for i don't know they, I they seem like they I seem like they're a nice lightweight hoodie though i mean like i know you're further south it doesn't matter I, but 
I can't. So this is the thing as lightweight, long sleeve stuff. There's, Says the guy who wears sleeves for like what a week a year at this point. It's, it's all a lie. <laughs> the guy, the guy who's taken the sleeve shirts and made them sleeveless has a problem with the long sleeve shirts. Who knew? He has to wear sleeves during during work. That's about it. Just comes home and his, yeah. his button up <laughs> shirt and just cuts them right off.